Yes, we're making this today. Macadamia nut crusted sea bass on mashed purple sweet potatoes. Yeah, you saw what it's gonna look like at the end. You got a few steps to get there, but it is going to be great. And let's start with our purple sweet potatoes. Now you could do this with regular sweet potatoes that aren't purple, but I found these Japanese purple sweet potatoes that looked really interesting and I decided to go with those. So I went ahead and removed the skin, cut them into small one inch pieces, boiled them up, I made sure they were tender. It took about 10 minutes. And now we're gonna turn these into those purple mashed sweet potatoes. I just wanna sort of break these down a little bit before we add our other ingredients. To this, I'm gonna add four tablespoons of salted butter. Work that in there while these are still nice and hot so it melts in. And once these break down and mash enough, we can switch to a spoon rather than a masher. Just wanna look for any lumps and any pieces that haven't been mashed. Now I'm gonna add about a third of a cup of half and half. You could use heavy cream here, you could even use milk, but just adjust the portions to get the consistency of the potatoes you want. These I want fairly smooth. I can always add more, so start with a little less. I don't mind if there's little chunks in here. When I say smooth, I mean I don't want big chunks. Not like my usual rustic mashed potatoes that I like. A little bit more, half and half here. So that's the full one third of a cup that I added. I held back a little at the beginning. Now I'm just gonna salt and pepper this to taste. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then I'll taste it and adjust as necessary. Take a little taste here. I'm not gonna change a thing. There is gonna be some more flavor going on this when we plate this up. We're gonna be making a honey butter to drizzle on, and there's gonna be some toasted macadamia nuts on top of this for a little bit of texture, but this tastes perfect to me right now. So I'm gonna cover this up, set it on the stove, just no burner under it, because we're gonna be using the oven in a little while. That'll help keep this warm. But let's move on to getting our fish ready and that macadamia nut crust for it. So I've got my food processor here, and you could do this by hand, breaking everything down, but this just makes it so much easier. You could also use a blender. To this, I'm gonna add one cup of macadamia nuts. Now, most of them are whole. There are a few little crumb parts, but that's fine because we're gonna break this down. You can see nice and broken down, but not a fine powder. You want tiny little bits. This I'm gonna add one half of a cup of seasoned bread crumbs. You could use plain, but if you use seasoned, you don't have to add as much salt and pepper and things like that. So these are just sort of an Italian seasoned bread crumb. I'm also gonna add half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of cracked black pepper, and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm also gonna add the zest of one small lemon. That's mixed well, and now I'm gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil as this is running on low speed. So what we want are almost like some pasty bits that'll stick together if you squeeze them. Hold a little bit of shape. All right, this is ready. Let's get our fish out here. So here are our sea bass fillets. About a pound and a half between the two of them. This one's a little bit thicker all the way through. This one's tapered. I've got them on a small rimmed baking sheet that I brushed down with some oil. And now I'm gonna hit the top of these with a little bit of olive oil. I want some moisture on here to help that macadamia nut crust stick to it. So just a little brush down with olive oil. I also wanna hit this with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Remember there's layers of flavor. Just a little bit. Now we're gonna get our macadamia nut crusting on here. 
So what you wanna do is get it on the top of the fish here. Some pieces are gonna fall off to the side and once we have this coated the way we want, we'll try and get those extra bits that are just on the baking sheet off of there because they're just gonna kind of burn sitting in the oven. So we're gonna try and keep it just on the top of these sea bass fillets. And some will fall off and you'll have to pick it up, that's okay. And you want to try and keep it roughly even across the entire surface here. If some little areas just won't hold any, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. There is skin on these fillets. If you want it skinless, you can remove that first. I'm going to go ahead and scrape up as much of this excess as I can. I'm not going to worry if a few little bits stay there, but try and get the majority of it. All right, that looks good. My oven is preheated to 450 degrees. These are probably gonna take 10 to 15 minutes at that temperature. Could take a little longer. Ovens are all different. The safe temperature to cook fish to sea bass filet is about 145 degrees. I prefer mine about 140 degrees to pull that. So really you need to make that decision yourself, but we will check these at 10 minutes to see how they're doing. Let's go ahead and get this in the oven. All right, we've been going 10 minutes now. I wanna give a check, see how we're doing temperature-wise. Oh, that's looking good. Getting some good color already. Let's get a temperature here. Yeah, we're about 61 degrees. We've got a little bit to go here. We've got good color coming on the top and I don't wanna to get too much of that. So I'm gonna actually loosely foil this now over the top. Just a little piece of foil sitting there. Helps shield that a bit. All right, we're gonna check that again. I'm gonna guess in 10 minutes. So I initially said 10 to 15 minutes, but it looks like it's probably gonna be closer to 20 minutes. And that's why it's important to check that temperature. Every oven is different. Every cook is different. If you say it's gonna take this long, it may not take that long. So rely on the temperature. Some things it's tenderness, but for fish, it's the temperature you want. All right, we've been going a total of 20 minutes now. It's time to check our sea bass. Looking really good here. Get a good temp in there. Oh yeah, that's showing 145 right there. Let me double check over here. 144, overshot it a little bit, that'll be fine. Let's get this out of here and start plating up our sweet potatoes and our sea bass. Get some of our mashed purple sweet potatoes on here. Nice bed for our sea bass. You can get really fancy with this and put it in a piping bag and make designs. This is about as fancy as I can manage. Now let's get our sea bass on here. I was able to slide my spatula right under the skin so most of the skin came off. Now I'd mentioned I'm gonna be using a honey butter drizzle here. All this is is four tablespoons of melted butter and two tablespoons of honey that I mix together in a pan. Very simple. We're gonna drizzle this anywhere you want. Run it on your fish, get it on your fish. I think I also mentioned that I'm gonna be adding some macadamia nuts that were toasted here. These were broken down pieces. I broke them down just in a Ziploc bag with my rolling pin. Toasted the butt in the skillet for just a few minutes until they got some color and you started to smell that macadamia nut scent. This is gonna give some nice texture to these potatoes. And just toss them around the plate too because they are yummy when they're toasted. Finally, a little bit of parsley on top. And maybe around the plate too. And there we go. Macadamia nut crusted sea bass on a bed of mashed purple sweet potatoes with some honey butter and some toasted macadamia nuts. And the parsley, but we won't count the parsley. This is looking fantastic. It's time to taste. Now I first wanna get a little taste of these mashed potatoes with some of that macadamia nut pieces on there. Aside from just looking really interesting, Using sweet potatoes when you're mashing potatoes 
gives you an entirely different flavor base than something like russet potatoes. And it is nice to change things up every once in a while. Mmm, that honey butter with a little bit of sweetness to it, perfect on these potatoes. Now for some fish. Here we go. Perfectly flaky there. And one thing you do have to remember, I think I mentioned it before, is every oven is different. This could take 30 minutes. It could take less time. At 450 degrees for me, this was just about 20 minutes, but you may have to adjust it. And if you're getting too much color, you can cover it like I did with foil, or you could turn the oven down after 10 minutes to say 400 degrees. And just shoot for that internal temperature that you want. That macadamia nut crust is flavor, it's texture. It's something that helps set off a great piece of fish. I didn't want to over season the fish itself. Some people do, they'll put it in like, almost like an Italian dressing for a few hours just to really get some flavor on the surface and embed it in the meat a little bit. But for me, I think this is the way to go. Mm. So if you're looking for maybe an interesting way to serve fish, I think this is a good option for you. Great base of flavor here with those purple mashed sweet potatoes, macadamia nut crust. You can't go wrong with that on almost any type of fish. This is just an all around satisfying, tasty, memorable meal.